Hi and welcome to Let's Talk eBay with Rich Bassini. Today is January 20th, 2020. I just want to start off by saying thank you to all my new subscribers who recently subscribed to my channel. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you like the content and come back for more. And if this is your first time hitting my YouTube channel, I just want to say welcome. I hope you like the content. I hope you like me. And if you do, please hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. And if you want to be updated to when I post that new videos, please hit that bell notification icon. Today I want to talk about my sales for January so far. I know that we still got some more time left, but I just want to share with you. I don't really do uh, updates on my sales, but um, I'm going to, you know, you know, share that with you guys. And I also want to share a story where I made a sale on Friday. Um, the buyer paid on Saturday and Sunday they picked it up, the item, and returned it the same day. This has got to be the first time this has ever happened to me because, I mean, like I said, you know, since the time I've been selling on eBay, I never recall having a situation like this. But needless to say, I'm not faulting the buyer at all. Um, it was in regards to a Cure Coffee Pot, and I'm going to show you that in a little bit. Um, but I, I, I think going forward, I'm going to, well, I want to share with you guys um, a way that may circumvent that problem, may or may not. And what I want to do going forward is when it comes to electronic items like that, I think I'm going to start including, if it's going to cost me a little money on printing, uh, to actually maybe give a couple pages from a manual on how to use the particular item. And when I show you the item, I'm going to talk about as to why the buyer returned it, picked it up and returned the same day. So stick around and uh, we'll do the, uh, we're going to do the uh, sales first and then we're going to go talk about the uh, return item. So stick around, please. To, uh, Check it out. Thanks. Okay, the first thing I'm going to go over with you guys is the sales for January. And not much. Um, I think I have a total, what, nine, eight or nine? <clears throat> Something along that line here. Anyway, it is what it is, right? So let's go with the first one. This is the one that's been a return. It's been purchased and returned <laughs> the same day to storm, but we'll talk about that later. <clears throat> Okay, this one here, just to you know, give you a little info on it. This was up at uh, $100. Um, it was on, I didn't have a, a what do you call it there, uh, best offer on this one here. I wanted a firm $100 on it. But the buyer contacted me and asked me if I would, you know, do $75 for it. I know people are probably thinking, oh, that's what you're going to add. I know it's relisted. No, the price is actually, the price went up on this here, to be honest with you. I've been doing a little research and these pots, these coffee makers, uh, they go for a lot more than 75 bucks uh, from, from what I've seen. Now, you guys may do your own research and say, no, I've seen them a lot cheaper than that. Well, whatever. I, I'm just based on the one on my research. I know everybody might, uh, you know, do research and say, I've seen these a lot cheaper. So you, maybe I'm charging too much, maybe I'm charging a little. I don't know. All I know is even the buyer told me, because these things do cost for a lot. You know, they go for a lot of money. Even if you buy them brand new, of course. Well, when you're at the time, I don't know if they still do. But anyway, I had it for 100 I took the 75 Needless to say, it came back to me. It was purchased that same day. Returned it same day. We'll talk a little about that later. This one here I had for, I think it was $39.99. The buyer offered me $29.99, and I took that. I took the offer. Okay, it's a Farberware pot. As a matter of fact, I just dropped it at the post office today because they're closed, as we all know. And I'll share those uh, holidays with you guys. You may want to keep a little notation or maybe print it out because sometimes I myself get confused with the holidays sometimes not confused but sometimes you know when you're getting so engrossed in your work it's like how come there's no mail today and you look it's like oh it's a holiday <laughs> you know so uh, I got a little thing there for you guys if you want to copy it or whatever or just keep a mental note um, yeah so this one here went for 39 but I took 29 for 29.99 if I'm not mistaken on it and I paid everything here well I saw this one was a free pickup uh, this one here, everybody pays shipping on the stuff I sell. This story here, I'm gonna I want to share a little story with this one here too with you. All right, this one here was I put it in for 1999, and that's what I got. There was no uh, person encounter with me, you know, didn't make any um, best offers, you know. So that's what it went for. Um, this one over here, Attack on Pearl Harbor. This was a brand new set. I had it for 7.99. I think they offered me five dollars, five ninety nine, something like that. I took the offer. They paid for the shipping, right? This one here was American Taurus, the luggage bag. Um, I had it for $19.99. I should have got more for it. I probably could have because the thing was in really good condition. I think they offered me $17 and change. I get, you know what it is? Sometimes people 
want to even if they're getting a few dollar change i notice like you know like a discount on it whatever i guess it makes them feel good i should have just said you know i first of all i should have listed it for more money which was my, on my part that was foolish on my part um because i want to unload this stuff so quick sometimes by being overzealous and anxious about getting stuff out you end up shortchanging yourself so going forward folks Think twice about what you want to do with that there. It depends how fast you want to move these things out. I don't plan on buying more luggage anyway. That's another reason, too. I had this thing sitting around for a while. And uh, I figured, let me just take what I can for it at that one point. Let me get it out of here. You know, they paid the shipping. Of course, you can see the shipping is $9.28. So, you know, it is what it is. This one here, I put it in for $99.99. This, uh, this person here, and I here's a little story with this one here. The person lived in my town, and they messaged me after they bought it. They said, listen, I live I like like five minutes away from you. Can I make a pickup? Now, I didn't have free pickup. But have, as you can see, it had shipping on here. So the buyer contacted me and said, can I pick it up? I said, I'll tell you what. At the time when I was going to send the invoice, I wasn't really sure that you could change it once it was set in the system. So I told the buyer, I said, listen, you don't have to worry. <clears throat> you don't have to worry. I've been on eBay for 20 years. <laughs> You're not going to lose any money or stuff like that. I said, what I'll do is, you know, here's what I'm going to do. I've done it before. I told the buyer, I said, Pay the whole thing, and I will return. I'll re, you know refund you the shipping that same day. So the guy was really nice about it. <clears throat> That's the price I asked for. It. That's what I got for it. It's just I think it just sold out. But you know what I did too? Uh, just because the buy was a nice guy and stuff like that, uh, I, I threw in a set of Sony headphones with it too. Just to you know, I don't know, just as an extra incentive. Maybe he'll remember. <laughs> maybe, maybe he'll buy from me again. Who knows? I don't know. But anyway, that's the story with this one here. So, the, no, the buyer did not pay shipping on this one here. The buyer did not pay shipping. Actually, he paid the full amount, the nine ninety nine plus the shipping, and I refunded him this year. So that'll happen on occasion, and I have no problem refunding the money, especially if you live in my town, right? This one here, the Tiffany style stained glass turtle lamp. I had it for forty nine ninety nine. Uh, I think I took it down. I think they the best offer was I think thirty nine and change if I'm not mistaken. I think there's like a ten dollar difference. Uh, I accepted it. They paid the return shipping if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what the price was. And this is back. But I went back to this again here. Uh, you're probably saying, "Hey, wait a minute. What happened here?" Okay, let me tell you a little story with this one here. Uh, this was sold on January fifth. The buyer decides to send it back. They didn't want it, so they returned it. <laughs> Needless to say, I had to eat the shipping on that. Um, so that's why you see it up here, okay? I know I had it for a hundred. A matter of fact, the per the buyer did make a best offer. I don't remember what it was. Um, I think I took seventy nine and change for this here, if I'm not mistaken. Buyer received it, had it for a, I don't know a week or whatever. Decided didn't want it. They sent it back to me. That's why it's back up there again. <laughs> it is what it is, folks. It, this is what you're going to deal with. <clears throat> When you're selling on eBay, you're going to deal with these type of situations. It's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, I've done things like that myself, maybe not as frequent, uh, where I didn't get to where uh, I made a purchase or something, and then I changed my mind later on within that same, within minutes later, that happened to me. Um, I was buying I was buying ink, toner or cartridge. I think it was either toner cartridge from my laser printer, and I made a, I, I did a little research. I was looking to see what the best offer, you know, best uh, price I can get, and I said oh this looks like a good price for it i purchased it and within that same time within like maybe two minutes later i was looking around scrolling around uh and then a message popped up and showed me something a little cheaper with the, you know the, the buyer had the free shipping on the other one as well but for some reason i just called up and canceled out the order or whatever and uh, the buyer you know the seller said that's okay no problem so things like this happen i mean you know it's 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 infallible not to happen you know these things are going to happen so you got to bear with it this one here i put in uh, this vintage Panasonic uh, stereo cassette radio. The cassette did not play. It was mentioned in the description. I put it in for $19.99. That's what I got, $19.99. They paid the shipping. Okay. And then we go into December. I'm not going to go into December. December sales were terrible. I don't know. I didn't make that many sales. Did I make a lot of sales in December? I don't know. Maybe I did. I guess I did. Well, yeah. Well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight sales. You know, you know it's like? It's funny. It's like eight and eight. I think this was eight, too, for, for January. <laughs> but anyway, um, enough with that there. Let me just go into this. I want to. I just want to share something with you guys. You see this one here right here, the Sony, the 1996 Sony uh, pocket radio over here? Now, when I get items, I want to, you know, I want to do research on them. I will go into eBay, and I will look and see what the other people sell. Just to get an idea of what the item's going to be, you know, how much I should charge. 
because I always say my thing is I don't want to go too high, I don't want to go too low, I want to stay right in the middle. In some, in some cases, that doesn't make a difference, especially if you're offering best offer. So that's another thing you got to decide too. If you're going to do best offer, make sure you're comfortable with, with, your, with, with taking a discounted price because you may be shortchanging yourself. That happened to me. You know, sometimes I want to move this stuff out. The merchandise I have here, sitting here, are sold. It's been sitting around for quite some time outside the Farberware pot. That there didn't sit around too long. I needed the disc. But I want to say one thing, though. Unless you're happy with the price that you're going to get, like when I put this here, then I took a chance with this here. They could have said, oh, we'll give you $14.99. Would I have taken it? I probably would have, you know. But the thing is, you've got to be happy with the price. You know, like in other words, knowing that you're not going to get $19.99 for this particular item because you're offering best offer. If you want, if you have a set price, don't add best offer, okay? Um, and the other tip I want to share with you guys, if you are going to offer best offer, I wouldn't offer free shipping. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, do the math. You'll find out in some cases it might not be too profitable for you. Uh, that's my take on it. If you're going to do best offer, don't offer free shipping. That's me. But that's me. You know, the, oops, sorry. I hit the mic. Um, that's me. You, know, you, you do what you want. It. You know, that's up. That's told to you. It's your call. All right. <clears throat> Getting back with this one here. Okay. So I do my research on eBay and I'm searching around, searching around, whatever. I do my thing. I go through watchcount.com and a whole kit and caboodle. And I get a message like this from eBay this morning. Um, they sent me a message. Well, all right. I, I clicked it on already. Uh, let me go back to that message. Let's see if I can get that message there. Um, right. Hold on for one second here. I'm trying, I'm trying to get to that message. And it goes on to say, seller offered special discount 24% on 1996 Sony 2 band FM AM pocket radio. Right. Now they're selling two. I am not looking to buy a pocket radio. Mind you, I am looking to get rid of a pocket radio apparently this is the first this is not the first time this happened i don't know if i, if I shared this in any of my other videos i want to share it with you now if i didn't if i did and you already seen it once before i apologize but if you didn't take note of it i don't know if you guys out there are getting these here but i am okay uh this particular item here all i was doing was research on it i want to see what the prices were and lo and behold, today, all right, this was this came January 19, 2020. eBay sends me this. Because you showed interest in this item, the seller sent you a private offer. I am not looking to buy this item, mind you. Okay, I'm not looking to buy this item. All I want to do is a comparison. So apparently, the way eBay's algorithm is working is that if you do a search on a specific item, they're going to come back, their, their algorithm is going to think, hey, you know, I'm a seller. I'm, if you look at my stuff, I am more of a seller. You won't see too much buying stuff from me outside of toner cartridges, ink cartridges, whatever for my legs, my all-in-one printers. That's about it. So I am not a buyer. I'm a seller. Why would I, why would you send me this here? All right, they might say, well, you know, it could be, an, you know, it's the big deal. They sent it to you. Uh, thinking that you were interested. Why would I want to buy another one? I'm not doing retail arbitrage. Now, if I was doing retail arbitrage, I could buy these here off the person. He's selling, it looks like he's selling, yeah, of course, what way it's here, it's two. Selling two of these for the price what I was selling my one for. So if I was going to buy these off this person, I could buy it and then sell them separate. But I'm not doing retail arbitrage on, on eBay, although people do do it on eBay. I don't. Okay. So I got this message. Then I went back here and looked at it and I said, okay, this is what the, the buyer wants to, you know, offer. I'm not, this, no, this is mine, actually. This is mine, okay? Um, yeah, this is my thing. Yeah, that's, okay, here's the one I was talking about. Uh, this is mine here. I don't want to, you know, the, all I did was, I just wanted to get a price on, a, you know, an idea of what the price, what should I charge for it, okay? You can see this is mine, Shop RGPC for great deals. But apparently, even though you're doing your searches, I don't know if it's affected you guys, but this is what I got. So I just want to throw it out there. Yeah. So anyway, um, if you guys have a similar situation like that where you're getting notifications from doing a search because you're a seller, and if you're getting these type of things you want to share with us, that's fine. You know, that'd be great to, you know, if you want to share it. If not, that's fine too. But anyway, that's that story. All right. So let's close this out. Let's close this window out here. Let's close this one. Let's close this one. And now we're back to this. Okay. This unit, as you can see, I had it for 100 
I didn't put, I, I think I changed it last night to best offer. Now, people are going to say, what do you want for a best offer on here? I also popped the video in here again, okay? Um, for best offer, I don't know. It depends what the potential buyer is going to, uh, you know, what kind of offer they're going to make, okay? Um, all I know is what I took it there, but if you noticed, I had it for 100 I raised up to $149 with free local pickup. Now, I could take a chance on, on packaging up and selling it up or shipping it out, but it is a, it's kind of a heavy unit, and not that I'm not good at shipping. I am very good at shipping. If you look at my feedback, you'll see some people like the way I ship my items out. I make sure they're well packaged and, you know, taken care of before I send them out. It's not me that I'm worried about on packaging. It's how it's being handled by the United States Postal Service, which I use exclusively, okay? And no, I have no qualms with them. And, you know, what people say, well, if you feel that way, why don't you go to UPS or FedEx? I don't deal with those other carriers. Um, to me, they didn't really do good by me. I always felt that I was overcharged with certain things overpriced when I did price comparisons with the USPS uh, Postal Service and with them. Okay, I felt I was being, you know, was, I was being overcharged for the same shipping, you know, shipping the same item out. So for me, it didn't work. I use the United States Postal Service exclusively for all my shipping needs. Period. So anyway, here's the story with this. The buyer gets it, and the buyer, by the way, is a real nice person. Left me a very nice feedback, and I just want to say thank you so much. I really do appreciate the feedback. And I'm not, I'm not. This is not the whole of shame here. Okay. Um, when I want the point I'm trying to get across is. When the buyer purchased this from me, he, like I said, it was picked up that same day and it was returned that same day. Person picked it up. Matter of fact, now I normally don't let strangers come into my house, but he called me up on the phone. I told him, give me a call to let me know when you're in the area. This will be all ready for you. So he called me up and he said, you know, I just wanted to ask you a question. He goes, uh, I want to see on the light there, like the light where the water tank is goes on, if it goes on, and I want to also check out the LED display. I said, yeah, that's not fine. He goes, you know, if you could just quickly plug it in, I just want to see it, you know, I just want to check it out, make sure everything's working. I said, well, that's fine. I mean, it's there anyway. I mean, you could see it. I'm not going to, I don't sell stuff that's broken. I mean, if, if this thing was broken, I'd put on a title, you would see the title instead of saying Breville Stainless Steel Claw Cure Coffee Cup Make. It would say for parts not working. Okay. Uh, no, I don't, I don't sell things that are broken. Okay. If it's broken or for parts not working, it would be in my display. Okay. So it comes over. I invite the guy in my house, you know. I know some people may bake the difference and say, wow, you let strangers come in your house? I know. I know people may say that's, that's, that's a very foolish thing to do, but you know what? Um, I, that's just the way it is, I guess. I don't know. I mean, maybe going forward, I won't do that again uh, because I know some people may say, well, you know, you let strangers in your house, you don't know what they might do. They could, you know, especially today in this day and age, somebody can come out of the house and rob you and then walk and run out of the house and take stuff from you. I know. It was kind of a foolish thing on my part. But, you know, the person seemed like a nice person, stuff like that. I know looks are deceiving and all that stuff. But I felt I felt comfortable with it. I had a good, I had good vibes with this person. So anyway, I let them in the house. I plug it in. I show them that the thing works. You know, he says, can you put a little water in? I just want to see if the tank works. You don't really need to put water in, to be honest with you. Um, do we want to see the lights there? If you see the two lights on the bottom there with a water tank, you want to see those light up. So anyway, he says, yeah, everything looks good. Everything looks good. I go, I go look. I walked out to the car with the person. I said, look. I offer free 30-day returns. If you're not happy with it, you could, you know, bring it back or whatever. You know, I didn't think it was actually going to come back. I mean, the thing works. But anyway, so the buyer gets it, uh, goes back to where he is in his town. He's about maybe 11 miles away from me here. And I get a phone call from him. He says, uh, hey, Rich. Uh, he goes, you know, the unit doesn't seem to be working right. I said, well, what do you mean it doesn't be working? What do you mean it doesn't seem to be working? I go, I tested this thing out multiple times. It, it is working. His thing is <clears throat> that he said it doesn't default to the Keurig. Now, I don't know what he means by default. If you look on the on this uh, coffee pot, they have, let's see, one, two, three, four. I'm looking on the screen over here. One, two, three, four, five. I think about five settings. And I think the last one I think is for iced coffee. I think that's what he said. So you got the one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five settings. The last one with that big U in there, he said that's for ice or something, iced coffee or whatever. I don't, I don't own a Keurig. I just buy them and sell them. <laughs> so anyway, he claims that when you unplug it, it doesn't default to the Keurig, the standard Keurig side. I don't know what he's talking about there, to be honest with you. Okay, and I'm not knocking a person. I'm not saying anything in a bad way or derogative way. But when a person says, when you unplug it and you plug it back in again, it should go back to the default. With this pot, let me explain something really quick with this coffee maker here. 
I, I try to tell him when you get it, you got to program it. Like in other words, you don't have to. I wouldn't. I don't. I wouldn't put the time in and stuff like that. I'm just interested. If I was, if this was mine, I, 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 I'll be honest with you. I was getting tempted to keep it. The more I keep looking at it, <clears throat> um, I wouldn't go through all that there. But it depends, you know. Uh, for me, I don't need all the settings and stuff like that. I like it when you turn it on, you go through the brew features, you know, the brew size, you hit it on there, right? You lock it in. When you hit the OK, it locks in, right? And when you power it up, um, it goes to that size. He was saying it doesn't go to the default Keurig size. Mind you, folks, <clears throat> when you set this up on this particular model, you hit the brew size cup, okay? I know I did it. I even had my brother. I called my brother and I said, hey, come in. I want to show you something. Tell me if I'm wrong with this here. So <clears throat> I I set it for the third cup, not the one that's lit up right now in the listing here. I did it to the third cup next to it, the third to the right, all right, from the right. And I set it. I did the brew size. I set it. I clicked the OK. Went through it. You have to go through the menu, and that's the default size. So the, the, the default size for as far as coffee cup, you know, whatever size you want. They do have the bigger one at the end there, but I don't. I just was testing it. So anyway, I set it. I clicked the OK. So I told my brother, I said, watch this here. I unplugged the unit, right? Completely pl unplugged it. Plug it back in again. Powered the unit on, and it was at that same cup, that same cup size. Now, two things. Okay, two things here. Now, buyer, some, I'm not saying it's a buyer remorse. In some cases, I think, and this, this probably happens most likely, I, I'll say it definitely happens. Um, a buyer might buy something from you and later on see something cheaper or maybe saying, hey, you know, uh, so-and-so's got an old one, they want to get rid of it, we'll give it to you and you can you know, just tell this, the seller you don't want it, whatever. I don't need anybody to make excuses to return things. If you purchase this thing from me and it, it's working fine and you say, well, I would rather the sell, the buyer be upfront and say, to be honest with you, I could get this here a lot cheaper. Or I would rather the buyer saying something to me it's along the line saying, could you do something better on the price? You know, rather than just making up an excuse to send it back. Because there's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing wrong with this coffee maker. I can tell you right to boot. I've tested it. When he brought it back, first thing I did was I tested this out. I plugged it in. I made sure everything works on it. Now, I told, I was even telling my brother, he says, well, why would you keep unplugging the thing for anyway? I said, well, he claims that every time he unplugs it, it doesn't go to a default setting, which is, it doesn't, that doesn't make no sense whatsoever. I have a Panasonic stereo, okay? When we have a power outage here, you know, after you program it in, like they're just the time, not there anything else. They're just the time. We have a power outage. When it goes out, it'll flash on and on. It'll keep going on and off. You'll get a flashing thing going there. And that's going to keep flashing until you actually go in there and hit do the manual settings. Okay? Now, this coffee pot here, this coffee maker, to the best of my knowledge, does not have no battery backup. I haven't seen one. Now, if it has an internal battery in there where it's doing it, then I don't know. I'm not, like I said, I'm not an uh, experienced Keurig man. But I can tell you right to boot, this unit works fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay? Um, anyway, so the person buys it, takes it home, calls me up, tells me this is what it's doing, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And there's nothing wrong with it. The thing works fine. Or else, if it didn't work fine, I wouldn't be putting it up here. And, folks, let me tell you something else. I've been on eBay for 20 years. Okay, I'm top rated seller on here uh, on this on eBay. I'm top rated seller plus on this. Okay, I'm not going to do anything that's going to you know jeopardize me getting booted off eBay or have my account closed because of something like that. I don't sell junk. If this was for parts not working, it would be listed in there for parts not working. Okay, whatever the whatever the reason was, he returned it. I refunded him. Gave me a nice feedback and thank you so much. If you do watch my videos, I thank you very much for uh, you know leaving that nice that was a, a very nice uh feedback i really do appreciate it and uh but i just also uh want him to know whoever is if he is watching that there's nothing wrong with this unit and in regards to a default keurig size um i don't know what you're referring to honestly i don't know what the person's referring to when it says the full keurig size uh with this particular model whatever size you set it at and you click the OK on it, it will, when you plug it back in and you power it on, it's going to go to that size. Plain and simple. There's nothing wrong with the unit. But anyway, to help going forward with this unit here, being, like I said, it's up for sale again on eBay, there's a site 
that you guys might want to check out. It's called Manuals Lib. Let me give the URL, okay? It's manuals, it's www.manualslib, which is probably short for library, no doubt, dot com, okay? When you come here, you could pretty much type in any anything that needs a that has it that has what manuals like if it's for I guess if it's electronic things like this particular model here you can get the instructional book it's 39 pages now what I'm thinking of doing okay uh, even though it's a local pickup and if it was being sold where I had to mail, ship it out I'm thinking like my brother said what well, you might want to do is go to the table of contents like this and print out the basic stuff to get the buyer a little understanding as to what it is now you could now instead of printing all 39 pages out or whatever it is here um, <laughs> it's kind of a lot to print out <clears throat> I'm not going to print out 39 pages because first off that's my paper I'm using and my ink uh, toner ink even though I get it for a good price it's not that cheap but he said maybe you might want to print out just a couple of them just to set it so maybe you want to print out maybe four or five pages whatever something to give the potential buyer an idea apparently uh, this, but from what I heard from from what this boy was saying, he had a different model, and he claims <clears throat> he claims that model he had, uh, what do you call it there, was a different format. In other words, it would always go default to that size there. Okay, this this is what mine looks like. Well, this is a lot cleaner. It's like brand spanking new. It looks like here. <laughs> um, yeah, but mine. This is what mine looks like. And again. Uh, you could download it in the PDF form uh, if you want to print it out, whatever. Uh, I, like I said, again, I'm not going to do that because it, it, there's another model here, the 600 I think he said he had the 600 XL. Um, in regards to the unit itself as to why he says you got to unplug it and you plug it back in again, at the, I don't know what he's referring to, honestly. Um, <laughs> I even did a video on it as well. I unplugged it, I plugged it back in again, and it went right to the size cup. It went to this cup, this size right here. I did it consistent one I was testing with, and I went through all the format. I went through up and down. You know, I checked the temperature on it and everything like that. Because this, the temperature on this on this particular model goes for um, from 192 to uh, what do you call it? 192. Whoops, here it goes. It goes from 192 up to uh, down to one, uh, 187. It's a good unit. It works. It works good. It really does. Uh, the only thing that's missing here in this unit here is the spoon, the original spoon that came with it. Okay. But um, the unit works fine. Uh, I tested it out multiple times, and uh, I don't see any. I don't see there's any problem with it. Uh, apparently, uh, the buyer probably didn't know how to work it, or whatever, or maybe they thought something different. I don't know what what it is, but this thing works fine, and uh, this is what it comes with, you know. So yes, um, if you are interested in this here, well, if you're a local, um, I know. I mean, some people may say, "Why don't you consider?" Uh, sending it out, shipping it out. Maybe you might, you know, it might get rid of it and load it faster. Um, it's not that I'm not afraid of not packing it right. I know I, I know how to package pretty well. It's just, it's not me. Uh, I worry about how it's going to be handled by the carriers. Okay, now I know it's it's insured and stuff like that. Most likely, I put insurance on these things anyway. But for the simple reason is I don't want to take a chance of. Here's the thing. Okay, just to, just to share this with you guys really quick. When you're offering 30-day free returns. You, as the seller, if they get buyer's remorse, they're going to pick up on the shipping cost. Plain and simple. Okay. Um, that's something you got to think about. Now, with the free local shipping uh, pickup, free local shipping, free local pickup, there's no shipping cost, of course, right? He, he comes over, he or she comes over, picks it up, they take it home. Hopefully, they're going to keep it. And uh, that's it. It's done. If they decide they don't want it, no harm done. You're not you're not eating the shipping cost. So that's another thing too. If you got items like this here, and you're very unsure of certain things, like hey, you know, geez, I don't know if I want to ship this thing out because suppose the buyer gets it and it costs a lot of money. I'm going to be eating those costs if they you know they decide they want to send it back. That's what you got to think about. Those are the things. These are the things you got to think about prior to sending stuff like this out. Okay. So uh, that's the story with this here. Uh, just to let you guys know, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, you know, it's it's going to be it's a free local it's a free local pickup. Uh, everything works on it. The person brought it back. I checked it all out, made sure it works. All the function keys on it work. There should be no reason why, if another person comes to buy this particular item, there should be no reason why it's not going to work. If it's working here, it's definitely going to work in your place, your house, plain and simple. So. Uh, I don't know. Some people will, uh, I'm not saying this case here, but some people will make excuses 
just to return it. I'd rather the person, like I said earlier, I'd rather the buyer just say to me, uh, hey, Rich, uh, listen, you know, not for nothing, um, you know, I, we've seen one here, we shop it online, we've seen one a little cheaper, and I'd like to return it, you know, I'd like to get a full refund. All right, well, that's fine. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. But if you're going to buy it, buy it. You know, make sure you do your research first. Don't buy it and then say later on, oh, I seen it here uh, on eBay for $15 cheap or $20 or $30 cheap and send it back to me. I want to unload this stuff. I want to unload it. I want to, I want to get it out of the premises so I can buy new stuff here. I already got three other Keurigs on there just to let you guys know if you're interested. I got three other Keurigs. They're, they're the black model. B. I think they're the, the K10, either K10, B31. I think they're both the same type of models. The mini single cup. They're not like this here. This is a stainless steel one. This is, a, this is I have to honestly say, I sold a lot of the color uh, Keurigs, yellow, blue, silver, the black ones. Uh, there might have been some other colors I, I might have sold uh, with that there. And to be honest with you, uh, thank God those went out and there was no problems with them whatsoever. I've sold them and I never had no problem. People saying, I want to return this thing's broken. Whatever it is. Because I test everything I have. Uh, matter of fact, the uh, buyer... I was asking uh, in regards. Let me let me bump out of the screen here. We don't need to keep looking at the <laughs> machine here. Let me just go bump over here really quick. Let me go back here. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, and the buyer said to me, um, I noticed you got some other uh, Keurigs on there. I said, Yeah, those are the single those are the single cup makers. Um, you know, if you're interested, he goes, Nah. He goes, We want the one with the water with the with the tank in there. So I said, All right, whatever. If you ever change your mind, you know where I am. But anyway. Um, I know I don't want to elaborate too much on that stuff there folks all I'm saying is uh, just to close this video out if you're gonna sell electronics if you can take the time to do it whatever I think it's a good gesture I think it would help um, matter of fact let me let me share this really quick with you um, I did have I did have a buyer that bought one of the cure I think it was the k10 model the black model I think it was <clears throat> and the buyer <laughs> now I'm not making fun the buyer wasn't really sure how to work it so I, I told the buyer, I referred them, I said, go back to the video, go back to the listing, and you could click on the video. And the person said, well, I didn't get a chance to look at your video. How do you work it? You know, and I told him, I said, look, if you go, take the time, if you can go this, she goes, can you give me the link? So I gave it a link to the video, but apparently she didn't return it. She wasn't looking for an excuse to return the item. She probably wasn't really familiar with that there. It's probably her first time maybe buying a Keurig or whatever, and it weren't for me. And I do. I'll be honest with you. If, if I didn't know, like my brother has one, and he, you know, he, he's doing it. I watch. I'm very observant when it comes to things of that nature. And I, you know, I was watching him. He had a single cup one. I think he still uses it to this day. And uh, you know, it's cut and dry. I mean, it really is cut and dry. You know, you, you know, the unit is powered on. You take a cup, the size cup you're gonna use, a mug or whatever. Uh, I use like a coffee cup like this here. This one's probably going to blend in with the uh, background here. But it's a small coffee cup, whatever. Anyway, um, and I use this size like that. And all you do is you pour it in. You put the K-cup in there. Close the lid. Hit the brew button. And that's it. It's done. So the person apparently still wasn't even... I don't know if they did watch the video and they were still one, didn't understand it, whatever. Um, I, what I did was I printed out... Um, the uh, instructions, basic instructions on how to use it for the Model K10. I know. So, no, not that I'm not, I'm not saying this in a, in a, in a you know, malicious way or anything. I'm not being mean. But some people, you know, maybe then maybe they're not good with the videos or maybe she couldn't find it. I don't know, whatever it was. But I sent it to her anyway. Okay. And going forward uh, with the other Keurigs I have, I will be sending those instructions unless I forget. I got a matter of fact, I got to print them out where I still got on my mind here. Um, I got to print out those basic instructions for those particular for that particular model, the K10, whatever. This way, they have it, and you know, hopefully that'll cut back on something like that. First, I'm not saying the buy would return. I'm saying, oh, I, I didn't know how to use it. That's why I returned it. If anything, they're going to return. They're going to say because it's effective and not working whatever but like I said again when it comes to things of that nature I do not sell defective items if it's, if it's not if it isn't a working item it will be right there in the title and in the description the parts not working plain and simple okay so um, yeah but going forward if you're gonna sell electronic things if you could take the initiative and time to do a little research go to that manualslib.com you don't have to print that the whole book. Like I said, you say things 39 pages. I'm not going to print it out even for this particular model. What I'll do is print out maybe four or five pages just to get them how to set the menu up. I, I show it in the video. It's pretty, it, it is really self-explanatory in the video as well. 
So, but I will do, you know, what I will, what I will do going forward when it comes to electronics, I will print out a basic, uh, you know, just like maybe just, I don't know how to set it up or whatever, how to just go through the menus and stuff like that. This way you can set the people up for this one. The yellow one, the same thing, you know. Some people don't know. They are not familiar with these items. So that's what happens, you know. I don't mind. Listen, I don't mind helping people out, okay. If somebody, if somebody contacts me, uh, they bought something, whatever, like, you know, let's say you see a demo video. I've had this happen before. Somebody will buy, you know, see my demo video about a Sony electric clock radio or a printer I sold. Or I did a demo, not sold. I did a demo on it because after I do the demos, they usually print to sell. Um, they'll contact me later on saying, "Where can I get the drivers for this uh, for this printer?" Or how do you change the time of that Sony clock radio, whatever model it is? And I will go out of my way to get them the information. I will point them in that direction. Like I said, go to manuals.lib. You know, go to manuals.lib.com. Show you or get the instructions directly from Sony. Now, a lot of people may say, "Well, can't those people do the same thing?" Yeah, they can. They want, but I don't mind. It's no bother to me. I like helping people out, and I will take the time and initiative to help you guys out if you do need something like that along the line. I know I don't mind, you know, and I hope people don't sit there and say, I don't want to bother the guy because, you know, he might be busy doing stuff. I don't, that's not what my channel is all about. My YouTube channel, for all intents and purposes, is to help inspire and share. I give free information out. You know, maybe one day if I get big enough, I could do a merch thing there. I can maybe sell T-shirts or whatever to try to generate an income to support my channel. I'd love to see this channel grow into hundreds of thousands, even millions of subscribers, which would be great, you know. But, I mean, that's, you need the hero there. <laughs> I think I'm way, way off for that there. That's probably not going to happen. Who knows? I might not ever see it happen. But in the meantime, um, I'm still going to be putting out, I'm still going to be producing videos for you guys out there and for the, you know, for the, the, the diehard followers who you know subscribers who've been with me through thick and thin i'm going to be popping videos out there and and any viable information i get that's helpful and i feel it's helpful to you guys i'm going to put it out there i'm going to put it out there and i'm going to share it with you guys out there and i'm hoping the most important thing about it like when i do the reselling news which will probably be coming up later on um i want i want you guys to get a takeaway from it it's one thing to do a video but it's another thing to get a takeaway from it, okay? That's the whole idea. That's what. That's the whole premise behind my YouTube channel. And I'm sure the other creators have this with the same intentions. Believe me, I am not knocking anybody, any other creators. I think there's a lot of great creators out there I follow, and they put out real good, helpful content, really good stuff, okay? So um, yeah, that's what my channel is all about. I'm not. I don't make these videos to waste your time. Like what I'm doing right now, the Let's Talk eBay, it's just to share information with you guys. Okay, and, and and you know, I just want to let you know what's going on. You know, what's going on with me when I have it. That's what the Let's Talk eBay is all about. It's my sharing experience that I have uh, with eBay, and I want to talk about that. The reseller news, on the other hand, is basically going to talk about what's going on in e-commerce or within the eBay world, so to speak. What's going on within eBay? I know there's also other topics, but Carrie might be popped in every now and then. PayPal. Amazon will come in. Pos uh, Poshmark, Etsy. Sometimes I cover those as well. I get Google alerts on all of those companies, okay, and even YouTube and Google, you name it, I pretty much get them all. And I could be doing, the, I could do the reseller news for hours on end, but nobody be watching it that long anyway, you know. So uh, I just wanted to share that with you guys out there. But just going forward, uh, when it comes to those little things, it's the little things that matter the most sometimes for people. I know it would for me. And I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, I do apologize for, you know, that I didn't think about this sooner. Sometimes it always takes something to, ha you know, something to happen in order to make a change in one's life or in a particular situation like this. You know, I should have maybe prior to giving it to this gentleman, um, maybe, like I said, print out maybe five or ten pages or whatever on my laser printer, whatever. I know it's going to cost money, ink, but you know what? If it's going to help, it's going to make the buyer's life easier. Why not, right? So even if it costs you so many, so much pennies to print out a couple of sheets or four or five, ten sheets, whatever it is, isn't it worth it in the end? They're happy. You're happy. You made the sale. You know, it's it, it, there's always going to be a trade-off, folks. There's always going to be a trade-off. So, you know, my thing is to do the right thing by people, and that's what I want to do. I want to do the right thing by people. I want I want a person when it, when a person comes to my 
eBay listings or to my YouTube channel. I want them to feel comfortable with me. I want them to go if deals with if it's dealing with eBay. I want you guys to know you can buy and shop in confidence, and you don't have to worry about oh, if I buy from this guy, he's going to rip me off. He's not going to give me. He's going to give me a hard time refunding my money. No, I'm not. The only thing I say in regards to returns. The only time there would be a problem like that that would arise, if I sent you something in 1A condition, it's working and stuff like that, and I know it works, and I did a video on especially electronics, that's what I was talking about doing electronic, you know, videos on electronics, and you send it back to me, it's in broken in pieces. Um, true, people say, well, if you have insurance, you could always put a claim in for it. That's true. All right, that's true. So at least, you know, you won't get, a, you won't take a beating on it 100%, but that's the only time I would have a problem. If a buyer bought something from me and it came back broken or somebody harvests parts out of it, I did a video about that, where people will take parts out of uh, an item and send it back to you, which is not fair. That's not right. So in a case like that, yeah, I'm going to rebuttal with eBay. I'm going to say, listen, I sent the thing out in 1A condition. It came back and there were parts missing from it. The buyer, the seller, yeah, the buyer took uh, parts out of it. You know, uh, I don't, in a case like that, I don't want to refund the buyer. It's not fair to me. Why should I take a loss? If so I'm selling something whole and it's, and it's, and it's full functionality it's working 100% and I'm going to send it to a buyer and a buyer is going to start taking parts off it because he's got to fix his item let's say he's got the same type of let's say it's a Keurig he's going to take parts out of it that the one I sent them a working one to fix his and then send it back say I want some I want a refund that's not fair no that's not fair that's when that's when the, that's when the times change with that part there uh, that's when I'm going that's when I'll look at things in a different perspective and that's when the time comes I, if something like that off a bit happens I'm gonna fight it with eBay and say no I'm not I don't want to refund the buyer I'm sorry he, he's took parts he or she took parts off this thing they broke it they sent it back to me and said it's defective not working when it is a def uh, when it is not a defective item and it is working uh, that's the only time I have a problem with that but again uh, it may be something just to think it's food for thought uh, when it comes to electronics and if you're sourcing at like thrift stores or whatever, take the initiative, a little extra time. I'm not saying if you're selling a thousands of those items. Well, if you're selling thousands of items and they're all the same thing, then you just print out a book. You just go to a print and say, print out multiple sheets. And it'll probably be a lot cheaper to go to a local printer and have them run it off rather than run it off on your printer. You know, using all your, lane, your ink and your toner cartridge. It's going to cost you money, but you could always pay that in the price. Let's say it cost you, I don't know, for five pages or ten pages, but you ordered maybe 500 of them. You divide that there and you just, you know, divide that price by the cost and just you pay that into the price with that electronic item. If, you, if you, I'm talking about that's where you're selling big, big volumes. If you're a high volume seller selling that specific or particular item, the same thing, then you would do something like that. But here, once in a while, what's the big deal, right? You know, the thing is you do right by people and that's what I want to do. But anyway, listen, I don't want to take too much of your time, guys. I do appreciate you taking the time to hear me out. Um, no, I'm not making a big thing about this, see, about the return. Like I said, I, I just want to share it with you guys. It's, uh, and I, I, I no, there's no, um, you know, there's nothing, I have no bad feelings towards the buyer. The buyer had every right to do what they did, you know. Even though I thought it was kind of funny, they bought it, they bought it within an hour, they brought it back again. That's okay. You know, um, I'm not, I'm fine with it. It, it. It'll go back. It's up on eBay right now. It's going to be, you know, hopefully it'll be sold. Hopefully the third time somebody buys it, they'll buy it because they want it. They're going to keep it and whatever. Um, but I'm going to print out, like I showed you, uh, so many of those sheets just to get this, uh, you know, just so they have something to refer to, you know. Uh, as, a, as I mean, I could always refer them to the video. But maybe it's better to have a sheet because people probably want to look at it. They probably don't want to look at a video and then go back and forth. So for me, it's best to just print out maybe five or ten sheets, whatever, just to help them set up the setup menu. It is cut and dry. I'll be honest with you. I don't really need it, but there may be people that like it. And if that's a little thing, that little perk is going to help make a sale, go for it. All right. I'll let you guys go. Rich Pacini signing off for Let's Talk eBay. Today is January 20th, 2020. I'm wishing you guys all the best in sales. I hope 2020 is going to be a good year for us, for all of us eBay sellers out there. And, um, you know, just keep plugging away and uh, just keep sourcing for good merchandise if you can. Keep the prices moderately priced. And do your research. Uh, that's what I've been doing. I've been doing my research again. I mean, I, have, I just took an item off, uh, like a Kim Kardashian bag. Um, I think it was going to end in 35 minutes. I just ended the listing and I'm going to look it over again. I'm going to try to, I'm going to go to watchcount.com. I'm going to, I'm going to see, you know, who's selling these items. If I'm selling it too high, too low, whatever. So, uh, I ended the listing personally ended it. Uh, the reason why I don't want eBay to automatically relist it again. 
because I want to make changes. And that's what will happen really quick. If you're on it, which, which is everything is good to cancel unless you go auction. Uh, with fixed pricing, it's good to cancel. Remember this here. If you don't end it, let's say you want to make changes. You could do it while it's still active. You can still go in and make changes. Change a category, change a title, description, whatever. P add pictures, take them out, whatever. But if you just let it override, okay, if you let it override where it, ex where it ends, expires, it's going to redo it all over again. And from what, a, what, a, uh, what one of the teammates, eBay, told me, it does not go doesn't get shown as a new listing it's just like a continuation of it this is what the teammate told me I, I'm just sharing it with you guys okay because I asked them that's one of the questions they asked I said when it relists does it get refreshed as a new as a new listing he goes no it don't that's what he said his words not mine I'm just sharing it with you guys so keep that in mind if you're going to uh, if, you, if you're unsure, if you got 30 days, like when I when I do relist them, they got 30 days. I could change them at any time. If I the pictures I don't like, I have plenty of time. I got ample time to change the pictures, correct them, you know, and reshoot some photos again, put it in there. If I seen it, if I if I caught it in a uh, in a different category, like as I put it in a different category, I have time to change it right away, change the title, maybe add some more stuff to the description, you know. You could do it within that 30 day range, but if you forget. Like sometimes it happens with me the way the days and weeks and months are flying by sometimes it's easy to forget folks okay so be careful with that well on that note i'm going to close this video out until next time bye bye for now